Good morning. How are y'all doing? Everyone have a good Thanksgiving? Yes, sir. Eat a bunch of food. Um, we had a blessed Thanksgiving. Um, all of my wife's family got to come. I think that's the um, first time in, I don't know, Ethan was telling me first time in, in 10 years that they've all sat down at the same table and, and had a meal together. So God is good. God is good. It kind of got interesting there for, for a second. Um, we're sitting there eating and someone said, man, what do you think the best part is? And I just kind of like, you could, I could, you could just feel in the room, all the, all the ladies' ears were just perked up, like, what are they fixing to say about my cooking, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, here we go. Like, someone's fixing to get their feelings hurt. And someone said, someone said, it's all good. It's all good. Every bit of it's good. And I thought, you know what? What, what a picture of the, of the body of Christ in that, in that moment, you know? We have se several different types of food there, and, um, we're all enjoying it, and someone says, what is the best part? And it's like, no, it's all good, you know? You got what's the turkey without the chicken and dressing, right? <laughs> you know, what's the, what's the chicken and dressing, you know, if, if you don't have cranberry um, sauce and stuff, so. Um, that, was, that has nothing to do with what I'm gonna talk about today. That was the same, <laughs> same part of that in there. Um, I'm gonna pray real quick before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for, for the thankfulness that we have, Lord, for all the things that we have to be thankful for, God. God, I pray that you just open our eyes, Lord, to see and our ears to hear, Lord, your word. God, I pray that you just use me as your vessel, Lord, for, for the Holy Spirit to, to speak through me. God, we thank you for, for this day and the blessing that it is to to come together and to just fellowship with one another, God. May your blessings just be on this day, Lord, and the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So, interesting enough, this is the 400th anniversary for Thanksgiving. Did y'all know that? As a country, we've been, well, here in the United States, we've been celebrating um, Thanksgiving since before we were even a country, so that's a that's a blessing to have 400 years of, of Thanksgiving. But anyways, um, if y'all will turn to Matthew 25, we're gonna start in in verse one. Matthew 
Specifically, this parable is, is talking to the, to the church directly. Um, you know, they all have lamps. And, and all of their lamps started out with light, you know. But then, it says they, while they slumbered and while they slept, you know, and it, and it says midnight, you know, that, that signifies the, the darkest hour of the night. That's when they were notified that the bridegroom was coming. And so at that point, some of them had brought extra, right? They had plenty of oil to carry through the night. But five of them didn't have enough. There wasn't enough oil for their light to still shine. And um, I think we're walking into a, to a season where God is... God is calling us deeper. He's calling us into to more, you know, um, to a better understanding of, of who He is. Um, so, I just want to go back to the oil and, and, and uh, just ask ourselves, you know, what are some things that, that, that drain our oil, that use our oil up, that that keep us from really filling that, that vessel that's supposed to keep that light going until we meet the bridegroom. Um, you know, I think, I think resentment is a big thing or, or bitterness or, or holding on to things from the past, things that we haven't really dealt with and um, just holds us back from, from truly loving people, right? Because we, we, we get in these situations where our emotions get brought back up, right? These feelings get brought back up. And then next thing you know, what, what is supposed to be love towards one another comes out as anger, comes out as hate or, or aggression. Um, sometimes... Um, it can be just self-seeking, right? Sometimes it can be we're just not really worried about other people. We're just kind of self-centered. We're in our own little lane, and we're not we're not loving one another in a way that that Christ has called us to love. And then sometimes we just get overwhelmed. We just get busy with with life in general. Maybe maybe work's going crazy. Maybe things are just, um, there's just things like, man, there's not enough time in the day to really just sit down and, and focus on, on God, right? That's right. And maybe we don't, we're just, like, we got to wake up early and it's like, man, we're already behind. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I don't have time to sit here and, and pray for 30 minutes, you know? Um, and... How many of y'all know of, um, of Martin Luther? He was um, he was one who who <laughs> started the Reformation of the of the Catholic the Catholic Church. Um, but he was a he was a super busy guy. And um, I'm trying to find a quote real quick. That he, And he said, um, Martin Luther, upon being asked one time by a friend what his plans were for the following day, replied, work, work from early until late. In fact, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. So he was literally saying, I have so much to do that if I don't, spend three hours in prayer before I start my day that it's not my day's not going to flow good so you see where his his focus was different he's like I have so much to do if I don't spend time filling my lamp with oil then I'm not going to have enough to make it through this day because it's going to be constant it's going to be constant and um but on the on the contrary, what are some things that, that really fill our, our vessels with oil? 
I think a big one is, um, is getting in God's Word. And, and reading and and it's you know it's it's how many of y'all been reading and it's just like you read something and you're like man that is exactly what I needed for this moment that's exactly what I needed for this day and it's and it was written thousands of years ago and speaks to that moment that you're going through so perfectly that's not a coincidence that's that's why we call it God's Word. You know, it's Him speaking to us. Um, another thing is is just praying, right? And 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 crying out to God and letting Him know like your your worries and what's on your heart and what you're dealing with, and and just getting that off your chest. You know, in, in Psalms. Um, 55, I think, verse 22, it says, cast your burdens on the Lord. And that, that word cast is literally meaning like to transfer weight, right? It was like what they would use, like if you were going to cast weight onto like an animal for it to haul it. It's that, it's that same, it's that same um, definition, the same word, like cast that burden on the Lord, like let him carry that weight. Because he's already paid the price for it. As long as you hold him to it, like it's going to weigh you down. But so, so spending time in prayer. And um, they asked, they asked Spurgeon, um, Charles Spurgeon, one time, he's a theologian. And they said, "What's more important, reading the word or praying?" And he said, "Well, <coughs> what's more important, breathing in or breathing out?" And the, the beauty of that statement is if you were to run and you would need to breathe heavily, you inhale just as hard as you exhale, right? You're breathing in just as hard as you're breathing out. So when you're running in life and things get busy, like Martin Luther was saying, he was saying, I need more, right? I need more time in prayer. I need more time in God's Word. Right. Amen. Um, and then, you know, another one is just is just spending time in God's presence, right? Just being still. And I think, you know, that's probably one of the most difficult things to do, right? Is just to sit in God's presence and just to wait. That's right. For Him to speak something to you. Um, I don't know how many of y'all heard um Kason's testimony, but that was so good. He's, he's sitting in his car and he's like, I'm not going anywhere, God, until you tell me like what I'm supposed to be doing. And he said, you know, it was, he said, God knew he wasn't playing. He was going to be there all night until he said something, you know, and it was like 15 minutes. But it took him sitting still for 15 minutes to just really know that next step like he needed to take. Right. And I wonder how many times we take the wrong step in life that cost us, you know, weeks, right. months, years, right. because we didn't sit in God's presence and figure out the right step that we should have taken. So, so I'm thinking, you know, to myself in this parable, I'm like, man, what is the oil? What does the oil represent, right? I mean, you know, we know we gotta have enough of it, whatever it is, to to make it to the bridegroom, right? And to be, to to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So it's an important thing. Like what, what is the oil? And so after digging in some other scriptures and we'll get into them. I think the oil is our love for God. How much, how much love do you have towards God because we know that God loves us right unconditionally to the point that he gave his son to die for us so God is not the limiting factor what is what did Scotty say last week he said you can be as close or as far away from God as you want to be his word says in James draw near to me and I'll draw near to you the, the limiting factor is us. The limiting factor is 
is how much, how deeply we want to know Him. How, how much we want to understand like what His Word is, is really speaking to us. Let's go to, um, to John 17, 3. This is one of Leslie's favorites. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So it's saying eternal life is to know Him. Not to have heard of Him or... or um, or been to church or sit through a church service, it says to know Him. That is eternal life. To have that relationship with Him is eternal life. And John uses the word know and love almost interchangeably. And so if we go to, um, let's go ahead and go there, to John 14. In verse 21, he says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Then in, in 13, um, verses 34 and 5, he says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And I think sometimes as the body of Christ, the mistake that we make is we try to love other people on our, on our own strength, right? And, and the problem with that is, yeah, sometimes some people are easy to love, right? It's easy to love until maybe something happens and that hurts your feelings. And then they become more difficult to love, right? Or, or you just come off as fake, right? Because you don't truly love them. You're just trying to be nice to them. But what John said or what Jesus was saying when he gave that commandment, he says, by this, they'll know that you are my disciples, that you represent me, is that how you love one another. And that's not something that comes on our own strength. It, loving one another comes from understanding God's love for you and the forgiveness that you've experienced and when you, when you have experienced that personally, it enables you to overlook other people's faults and love them the way that Christ loved you. Amen. That's what Jesus is getting at when he says, you know, don't worry about the speck in your neighbor's eye when you have a plank in your own eye. Right. Right. He's saying, I've forgiven you just like I've forgiven them, but it's so easy for us to spot someone else's flaw. Right. But they're forgiven just like you're forgiven. Right. Jesus loves them just as much as He loved you. He died for them just as much as He died for you. <coughs> and so when we start hanging on to that bitterness, to that anger, to that resentment, man, that drains our oil, right? All of a sudden, that, that light, which is the love of God that you're supposed to be shining and showing to other people, is non-existent. And when you go to the door and knock on it and say, hey, we're here, we're ready. He says, I don't know you. Literally in the Greek, when I, when I was looking at that, he's like, I, I don't recognize you. 
Because there's no love there. That's what he was saying in in John um, in John 14. He says, "If you love me, then you do my commandments." And he says, "If you love me, then God will be manifested to us, right?" So then it's 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 no longer you loving, but Christ loving through you, and that's a that's a huge step, I think. Like we can, we can all make, you know, in the body of Christ is, is I'm sure most all of us have somebody that if you walk through that door right now, your blood pressure would just go <laughs> through the roof, right? You remember a time, you remember an experience, you remember something where, man, they really did you wrong, right? They really don't deserve this. Let's go to um, Matthew chapter 6. <laughs> Verses 14 through 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive me in their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And that, that's all tied back to Jesus' love, right? Understanding His love for you, understanding His forgiveness for you. And just like He overlooks your faults, overlooks your sin, he says he cast it as far as the east is from the west. That's what we're called to do to others, right? Again, he says, whatever judgment you use to judge others, that same judgment will be used to judge you. That's right. That's right. I don't want any judgment, <laughs> so I'm not about to judge anyone else. You know, I... We, we've got to get to that point where it's just like, it's just God's love flowing out of us. And it's, and it's contagious, right? It's something that people look at you and they say, man, there's something different about him. That's right. Amen. Like I did this and he didn't even, he didn't even care. He loves me. Uh -oh. Didn't even get to him. Didn't even bother him. Just um, at the end of chapter 5, just a little bit farther up, he, Jesus tells him, he says, love your enemies. <coughs> because at one point in time, we've all been enemies to Christ, right? Amen. Through sin. That's right. That's right. And we got to get to that, to that level playing field that says not, not one person is above another, Right? We're all, we're all sinners. We're all saved by the love of God and His sacrifice and what He gave up for us. It says, Him being God, He didn't even consider it something to be grasped or held onto, but humbled Himself as a man and came and died for us. While we were still sinners. While they were Casting lots for his clothes at the foot of the cross said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Amen. That's right. That's, that's the kind, that, that's the in-game love. That's the kind of love we're trying to get to. Um, so let's go to 1 John chapter 4. Man, you want to talk about, I know it's all good, but. And I was reading this this morning. I was like, man, I just want to read it all. Then Johnny gets on to me. I'm going to, I'm going to read um, verses 7 through 11. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, 
for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And this is love, now that we love God, but that He loved us and sent us. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the appropriation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. <laughs> then down in verse 16 it says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God. <laughs> And God in Him. So our relationship with Christ is rooted in love. It's rooted in understanding who God is. Um, in verse 16, when it when it says, "And we have known and believed the love that God has for us." This is the same known that it's the same word in the Greek as used to describe in in, um, in Matthew talking about Joseph towards Mary. It says, and he didn't know Mary until after the child was born. It's the same no right there. It's in so what John's saying here is it's it's an intimate no. It's a relationship. No, it's it's deeper than just knowing um, knowing of God, right? It's knowing Him personally, and I think in our lives that's where we struggle at a lot as as Christians is getting to that intimate part of the relationship, right? Where where we're, we're spending time in prayer, we're spending time in God's Word. It's like you just want to know more and more and more. We just kind of want to, want to do life and, and do the things that, that we get enjoyment out of and then getting God's Word like if it's convenient for us. If, if there's enough time at the end of the day like, I want to encourage y'all to, to spend time with God before you start your day. Like, even if it's just a few minutes, whatever, like, if, if it starts out just a few minutes and you're consistent, you're going to want more. You're going to see the way that your day goes. Like, with me, I know, like, in my week, if it gets, starts to get chaotic and, and, like, man, I'm like, I don't have enough time in the day to finish things, I know but it's because I haven't been spending enough time with God. Like when I take that time at the at the beginning of the day, and when I when I really like am digging into the Word and praying and spending time with God, my day flows good. It has a good flow to it. I'm not saying that things never happen because they do, but you're better equipped to handle those things. Right? Those things would have happened even if you weren't spending time with God a lot of times. But it just changes your mindset. It changes your heart. And instead of coming at things in a, in a worldly view, you're coming at them with, with the love of Christ. The love of God. Um, I guess the, the musicians can come up if, there's, if y'all are going to do that. sure 
that in that darkest part of the night, at that midnight hour when they, when we're notified that the bridegroom's coming, what are we doing to to ensure that we still have plenty of oil? You know, it's interesting that that the other virgins couldn't share their oil, right? <laughs> you can't share your relationship with God to someone else. They can see what you have and want it, you know? They saw that the other virgins had the oil, right? And they wanted it. But it's something that you have to, you have to get for yourself. It's something that, that you have to feel for yourself. And we can do that whenever we want to, right? Whenever, whenever you want to make the time, you can start feeling your oil. Just want to encourage you if you have if you have something that you feel like you need to let go of. If you're have a lot of anxiety, if you have a lot of things that, that are keeping you, a lot of hard feelings towards maybe another person that are keeping you from really loving people, to let it go. To cast that burden on the Lord. Transfer that weight to Him. Because He's already paid the price for it. And when you understand what He set you free from, when you understand the love that He has for you, it's easy to forgive people. You know, I don't know if Leslie and I would still be together today if, if we didn't have the love of God in our lives and the ability to forgive one another when we messed up. That's right. Because we all make mistakes. And we've all done bad things. Things that we're ashamed of. Things that we probably don't even want to share with other people. But man, I thank God that I was able to give that up. That I was able to cast that burden on God. I'm thankful for, for everything that He set me free from. So as the song's playing, like I just want to encourage y'all to there's something in your life that's keeping you from going deeper, that's hindering that intimacy with God. So that you're recognized by others, by your love. To just to just come up here, to lay it down, lay that burden down. In the prodigal's parable, 
It says the father sees his son while he's still a long ways off and runs to him and embraces him and catches him in his arms. And I can almost hear that father screaming his name as he's, as he's running to him. Like he's came home. He recognizes him. He says, return to me and I will return to you. He's longing for it. He's waiting for it. Says he leaves the 99 in search for the one. Like, and it's up to us. It's up to us to, to take that step. And if any of y'all want to make that step today, today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. Don't walk out that door carrying that burden. Don't walk out that door without trying to have an encounter and experience who Jesus is. You know what the woman at the well, he says, Jesus tells her, if you knew who asked for water, then you would ask him for water and he would give you living water. Right? If you just knew, if we just know who he is, if we just put that effort out there, it changes us and it changes others. So as the song plays, if any of y'all want to make that commitment today, I just want to encourage you to come up. Or if you feel like you need to let go of something, like come up here. I know it's difficult. There's always that little voice in your head that says, no, I, no, not right now. Not right now. People are watching. Right? Now's not the time. Like, can you just hold on to it for, for how much longer? It's like when, you, when it's so easy to just take that step and to just let it go. That's the enemy. That's why he wants to tell us, no, 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 that would be another time, right? So like, no, now is the time. Now is the time. It's like, it just takes your obedience. It literally just takes your footsteps to be set free. And to take those steps to try to understand who God is and how much He loves you.
says God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Oh, 